I thought it would be interesting just to give you my kind of condensed hot tips. These are the hottest bang for buck tips you're going to find on buying computers and especially deciding what specification you need for these computers. And if you have any questions, by all means, let me know in the chat. So first quick tip, your GPU is almost always more important than your CPU, especially for our industry, for real time, immersive media, interactive technology, almost always every dollar spent on GPU is gonna give you better return than dollars spent on CPU. And there's a couple of different ways you can think about this, but when I'm approaching just the practicality of buying a computer, the first thing I do is, okay, which, which CPU is in it? Can I go back one generation of CPU? Maybe even two generations of CPU? Because that's often where, especially if you're buying production boxes for your office or for your own personal practice, you could almost slash the price of your CPU in half if not more, by just stepping back one generation, maybe coming off of the top end, you know, instead of getting an i9, get an i7. I'm a big fan of i7s. I think they're kind of in that sweet spot for our industry. i5s, the Intel i5s a little bit on the lower end. i3, just ignore those. i9, I find they're nice, but you're gonna pay a premium to get extra features that I think won't really be noticeable in your day-to-day -day usage of these computers. That's why i7, I think, comes in at that really good mix of fast clock speeds, good number of cores, good price points, especially if you know you go back one or two generations. And the really great thing is when you start to think about your computer like this, similar to how we approach optimization as more of a balancing act and not so much a hard or fast rule set to fix stuff, all that money you save on a CPU, let's say you were gonna get an i9 and it was 800, 900 bucks, but now you can step it down to an i7 and that's only three or 400 bucks. That's 400 bucks you could put into upgrading your GPU. You know, maybe your budget originally had only capacity to get a 2070. Bam, now you just have enough money to go to a 2080 and probably even put some money back in the bank, which I think is pretty important for a lot of folks. So first thing I always do is usually I go back a generation. CPUs don't evolve as fast as GPUs. You know, every, I wouldn't say every year, but at least every two years, GPUs make a pretty big leap, especially like the NVIDIA ones, new features are added, the um, amount of memory they have just keeps exploding through the roof every year. Now almost all of them have eight gigs by default. Like I think 2070 even has eight gigs by default when you get it. Um, more CUDA cores, some more power. The GPUs seem to make a really good progression every year. Whereas CPUs, to be honest, like you could go back like four or five years and get a quad core or six core at 3.7 or four gigahertz and obviously there's going to be some differences between, you know, a 2015 version of that and the 2020 version of a four core, or six core processor. But a lot of that is, is probably not going to be noticeable in your day to day workflow. You know, a lot of the efficiencies that we're gaining in CPU development are like the size of them. They're getting smaller and smaller. The heat they're taking. Well, there's power consumption and heat because those are kind of related. So a lot of them are taking less power, less heat is generated. But at the end of the day, we're, we're not in kind of like the, the, we're not really a green tech industry, I would, I would say. So we're not really benefiting from a lot of the benefits of these newer CPUs. Now, that also holds true when you think about the future investment, because if you get a CPU that's like a year or two old, you probably won't need to upgrade it for three, four, five years. Your GPU, you're probably gonna to need to upgrade quicker if you make budget decisions. So for example, if you went in on a computer and you got something like a 2070 or a 2060 just because you were trying to you know, get like a, an i9 CPU and lots of RAM and some other stuff and you're like, oh man, the only budget I have left is, is to get a low-end 2070 or like a, one of the better 2060s, that's probably gonna to have to be upgraded in about two years. But once you put down that extra money and invest into the better GPU now, so for example, if you went with a 2080 Ti or a 2080 uh, Super, or even if you don't, you, I'll talk about the Quadros in a little bit, but if you step up and go into the Quadro class and you get like a Quadro uh, RTX 5000, that's gonna last you like four, four years probably. I mean, I still have computers here running 780s, 680s, 980s, and they have no issue at all. And I have no reason to upgrade most of them, especially when we're talking about in-house production boxes. If you're talking about boxes that are gonna go in the field, you probably just wanna keep those a little bit updated anyways, but especially for computers that are gonna use at home, if you go on the higher end of whatever's available for GPUs, you're gonna find that they're gonna, they're gonna last at least a year or two longer than if you go down to 
you know, the, the lower levels of the GPUs. Now, another big thing with CPUs that really, I think, tricks people up a lot and makes them spend more money than they need to is this idea that in the general computing industry, the trend is going towards more cores. So, you know, before you would have four cores and you power as many gigahertz into the cores as possible. Now we're seeing all these six core and eight core and 10 core and 12 core processors kind of become the default, uh, especially when you start looking at the higher end i7s now of this generation and the i9s. You know, they're in the eight to 10 to 12 core range and that's kind of the trend the industry is going in, which is more cores, usually lower power for those cores. But for our industry, most apps are not multi-threaded everything is trending towards GPU. So actually for a lot of our industry, it's better to stay at a lower core count. You know, we're talking like four or six cores and have each one of those cores have a higher clock speed. So you'll actually find that an i7 with maybe about four or 4.5 gigahertz clock speed will feel a lot stronger than something that's maybe six or eight cores, but it's a 3.5 gigahertz. Just because, you know, especially when we're talking about touch designer, um, not a lot of the app is multi-threaded because most of it is leaning towards GPU workflows. So having 4.5 gigahertz instead of 3.5 gigahertz is gonna be a big difference. And this is really like for our industry, this is where we diverge a little bit from, you know, the, the rest of the computing world, just because we're everything we're doing is moving to GPU. You know, if you look at Notch, most of the app is GPU, particles are GPU, everything's on the GPU. We're talking about touch designer. We're also moving everything to GPU, you know, all these new point cloud workflows coming out, math top, all of these things moving to GPU. You know, you think about renderers like Octane and these kind of newer style renderers that are doing high quality, also GPU accelerated rendering. Our industry is like, you know what? We're doubling down on the GPUs, but that's not what the consumer industry is going. The consumer industry is like, hey, Intel's integrated GPU is fantastic. Let's just put some more cores in here and, and offload some of that integrated GPU workflow back onto the CPU. And this is really important because multi-threading, like I said, is hard. I'm sure you've you know, worked through either Adobe Suite or C4D or any of these kind of apps. And even these big name apps made by giant companies with lots of employees, they're not really that multi-threaded. Most of the stuff's running on a single thread. Most of the stuff's you know, taken down on the GPU, on the storage. We're not really like spinning off a hundred threads to deal with stuff. You know, if you think about touch designer, very few parts of it are heavily multi-threaded. The main ones are gonna be stuff like some movie preloading, but otherwise everything from all the Python scripts you're running, SOPs, CHOPs, DATs, all these things are just on one thread. And yes, you can take advantage of, of engine comp, but you're not going to find a pleasant life if you make crazy insane CPU based projects and you use engine comp to like split it up into little chunks just so it doesn't crash. That's gonna be a life of misery, right? These days, everything's moving towards GPU workflows. So, you know, just a quick mention that I had was, was Quadros versus GeForce. We don't have to get into this whole ball of wax. If it's an in-house production box, I often recommend get a GeForce. You'll get a faster card for a lower price. If this is gonna be something for an installation or if it's gonna be a box that you're gonna deploy out into the world, I heavily recommend going for Quadro, even if it means you have to step down one level of Quadro just to make it affordable. I think you're gonna gain a lot of benefits in terms of the driver support and just all the little things, tweaks you can make in the driver to make your installation run as smooth as possible. So then there's three other parts. That's the big, that's the big part, GPU and CPU. Every, if, if you're hanging on so far, everything else gets easier. RAM is especially easy. Just buy whatever's on sale. You know, if it's G Skills, Corsair, these are two good brands. They make a lot of RAM. You're very hard to go wrong with G Skills or Corsair. And you can basically just go onto your favorite computer part website, look at the RAM section, look at the sales and just grab basically whatever is appropriate. And the only thing you really need to know is that for our industry, 16 gigabytes is fine. Eight gigabytes is a little bit low once you factor in operating system and all these things. 32 is fine, but I don't think you're gonna really feel that much benefit because like I was saying, everything's going GPU. So we're not really doing a lot of RAM intensive workflows. So having 32 gigs of RAM is way, I mean, in my whole career, 16 gigs is the average that I put in all the machines and all these gigantic in installations run fine and then operate perfectly. So I don't think there's any reason that you need to really invest too much in RAM. And then finally, with RAM, there's a little trick. More small sticks are faster than fewer big sticks. So, you know, a good example is if you want to get 16 gigs of RAM on a computer, 
when you look at your motherboard, you see it has four slots. That might mean, you know what, get four four gig sticks, which is gonna be better than two eight gig sticks, which is gonna be better than one 16 gig stick, just because of the way the, the system can kind of load balance between all these different RAM sticks. So, you know, I'm not saying go out there and like look at your CPU and like fill all the slots completely full. Usually the average is if you want 16 gigs, you go for two eight gig sticks. If you want 32 gigs, you go for like uh, four eight gig sticks. Or if you only have two slots, you can get uh, two 16 gig sticks. But if you can kind of keep that stick count higher and the RAM amount per stick lower, you're probably just gonna find a little bit better performance. You're probably not gonna notice it though, just cause like I'm saying, we're not really in a RAM intensive industry. So just buy what's on sale, save yourself some money. G skills, Corsair, they're gonna be great. If, if you plug it in and it works, it's gonna work for a long time. If you plug it in and it doesn't work, immediately return it and get a new pair. You probably just got a bad pair of RAM sticks. So then we get to storage. Storage I think is a also a pretty easy one if you were following the, the Twitch stream. Samsung 970, that's it. We can just, we can shut the stream down right now. So not even the stream, the Zoom call. Samsung 970. All day, all night for me. Every machine I have that I do a project on, I just pop a Samsung 970 into it. Uh, they're very fast, like very, very, very crazy fast. Uh, I think when we were looking at the specs the other day, 3.5 gigabytes read speed, 2.5 gigabytes write speed, and that's gigabytes, not gigabits. So that's like real speed, not just like arbitrary hypothetical numbers. These are like, you know, five times six times faster than what the SSDs used to be. And I'm telling you, you put one terabyte Samsung 970 in there into a computer and you can run the whole project. Unless you're doing some crazy project that has archives and archives of giant HapQ Alpha videos that take terabytes and terabytes of data. In which case I would say get more, get two Samsung 970s if you can. But you know, on most projects, one to two terabytes is more than enough for all the media, the OS on the computer, uh, all the apps that we got to install, et cetera, et cetera. One to two terabytes is fine. And it's very cost effective if you're going for a Samsung 970. I think one terabyte was about 200 bucks. And I think two terabytes is around 400 bucks, 500 bucks maybe. So when you think about it, two to 400 bucks, all your storage you're ever going to need for almost any project. Then when we come to motherboard, um, you know, motherboards are an interesting one. Some few things I'll just say right off the top is you know, go for some trusted brands. Gigabyte makes good motherboards. Uh, I've really always had success with them. You know, a lot of the other community members have also mentioned that Gigabyte has been really good for them. Uh, ASRock, ASRock, however we want to pronounce it. I've heard a lot of reviews online that say they make really good budget motherboards. So if you're looking just to kind of put together a, a system on the, on the cheaper side of things, that might be a brand you're going to look at. And there's only a really couple specs that you need to check out for that. One is the size of it. So if your case size doesn't matter to you and you're just gonna put into any case, I'd recommend go ATX and then just get a big case. It's gonna be really easy to get your hands in there. And I got like lobster hands. I'm not, uh, you know, insert industry here that does things with their delicate hands like origami. Like I, I don't know, I'm like, I got these lobster claws. If it's a full size ATX case, full tower, and I got a full ATX board, it's really easy for me to like go in there and work on stuff and move stuff around and, and wire stuff up. If you go into these smaller cases, <laughs> I become a lot less useful of a human being inside these situations. Um, so, you know, if you don't care about case size, go full ATX. That's going to be the full size desktop motherboard. If you want a nicer case, maybe a little bit smaller form factor, I would say go micro ATX. Uh, I honestly wouldn't go any lower than micro ATX on the scale of sizes, unless your whole full-time job is to travel with this desktop computer in your backpack. And I know that sounds enticing for a lot of people like, oh, I can put my desktop computer in my backpack, but it's actually gonna make your setup very much a miserable experience. Anytime you need to service this thing, it's gonna be a miserable experience because you basically have to take the whole, th it becomes like MacBook Air situation. Every time you wanna fix something, you gotta take the whole thing apart to fix the one thing, then you gotta recompile the whole thing back together. Whereas if you have like a bigger case, whether it's micro ATX or full ATX, it really just becomes a case of like popping open the case, touching the one thing that needs fixing and then like closing the case and getting back to work, which is most important. So aside from size, you know, just check with the motherboards what features you want because a lot of the features of computing are at the motherboard level. So whether it's got USB 3.1, you know, is it Gen 1 or Gen 2? Is, are there Thunderbolt ports already built into it? 
these are the kind of things you're really going to want to check on the motherboard side of things. And especially, you know, we're talking about Samsung 970s. So you really want to check and make sure there's an M.2 PCIe slot. Um, all these things, you want to check how much RAM slots you have. And then the most important thing you want to do on the CPU, which I saved for last, is checking the socket type. And that's because not all motherboards can accept every single CPU. So every CPU has like a special little pin configuration for how it plugs into the motherboard. And when you decide on the CPU, that's the word I'm looking for. When you decide on your CPU, somewhere in the description, usually right in the title of the product you're buying, it's gonna say something like, you know, LGA 1151, LGA 20 something something. You know, it'll, it'll have some kind of like, weird wordage that you're like, oh, that, that isn't related to performance, but that seems to be important. That's the term you're going to go and just make sure on your motherboard, it says this is the socket type LGA 1151 or, or whatever that is. And then as long as that's correct, your CPU is going to fit in, you know, as long as it's the right size, whether it's full size ATX or micro ATX, that means it's going to fit in your case. And then just make sure it's got the features you want, you know, like USB, does it have enough SATA ports? All these kind of things can, can factor into which one of the motherboards you're buying. But even with that, I would say motherboards like RAM, look for what's on sale. You know, you could spend 500 bucks plus on a motherboard, but I really don't think it's really useful for our industry. I have had a lot of success even with these more kind of mid-range, $100, $150, $150 to $200 seems to be where you're going to get all the features you want, USB 3.1 Gen 2, Thunderbolt, et cetera, et cetera. You don't have to worry too much about the display outputs, like if there's like six HDMI ports for some reason on the motherboard. That's not really a feature to us because everything has to run through the GPU anyways. Uh, so you don't have to worry about if it's got like display port and DVIs that we're not, we're never going to touch any of that kind of stuff. So with that said, that's kind of like the nuts and bolts, quick tips. If I had to summarize, I'd say save money on CPU, spend it on a GPU, buy G skills or Corsair Ram on sale, put a Samsung 970 into it, get a $150 to $200 gigabyte motherboard, as long as it matches the socket type and fits in your case. I mean, you're, you've basically got a lot of a computer spec more or less finished up right there. And then it's just a few little things putting it together, power supply and stuff like this, which power supply, there's no super wrong answer. I, I would just kind of recommend semi-modular or modular just to make your life a little bit easier and cable management a little bit easier. But if you get 600 plus watts on a power supply, it's 80 plus any one of the colors, you know, gold, bronze, platinum, titanium, then you've got yourself a pretty good thing. You know, if you go with either Thermaltake, Seasonic, or EVGA, you're going to get a good box there. And that's, that's, that's most of your computer in a nutshell. I mean, you can deep dive and get a lot into the specs and especially what kind of specs af affect what kind of processing you might be doing in your project, especially on bigger projects, this becomes really important. But if it's a general box, that's a lot of the information that I think most people will need to, to get up and running with that. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you're serious about learning touch designer and getting into our interactive and immersive industry, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can click the link in the description to learn more about that. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the little bell icon for more awesome free content.